Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Odious Stuff. Hey, and now they're all about Ableton Live video, and this time we're talking about glue compression. I will tell you what it is, how it works, and also what is compression, and all these questions will be answered today. Yes, it's just there will be a great tutorial. <laughs> all together. Also, if you want to see other great tutori tutorials, tutorials, then please check out my playlist of full of all about Ableton Live videos, which will be looking a bit like this. And the link for that is down below so you can go and learn more about Ableton Live. But let's get into this video and learn about glue compression, what it is. What it is. You will know. Okay, 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 hey, okay. Oh, yeah. So, the first thing we're going to be talking about is what's the difference between glue compression and normal compression? In the first place, first thing is if you don't know how compression works, if you don't know how this compression works, then go into two videos down below where I explain what compression is. And in the other one, I explain how to apply it. So it will really help you then to understand this and how the glue compression then works. Okay, what's the difference? The biggest difference is that this glue compression is not in intro and light versions in the first place. Um, it is also also analog modeled, like it copies analog compressors basically. So it has this kind of more like knobs that really could be in a analog compressor, hardware compressor. Also it has this display that shows the gain reduction in a like with a thingy like this. So it's also mainly used for mastering, you know, drum buses, bit like what I have in here. So I have a group track with drums in it. So it has a lot of different different uh, drums that I want to glue together to make cohesive sound. So when you have a lot of different bits and you want to make them all sound great together, that's basically where glue compressor is great. The normal compressor is, you know, you can catch peaks with it. You can also do more cohesive thing, but this because it's already made specifically like to put everything together, it will. it's really good for it. So that's where the glue comes from, that it glues things together. So in this glue compressor, there's not that kind of manual knee here that you can change. But in this glue compressor, there's actually this cool thing is what more ratio you add, the more harder knee it adds. So it's a bit more simple, but again, it's made for this purpose to put things together. So I have it here on a drum bus. I have different drums. Let's hear how they sound. Let's together. Great. So let's go a bit by bit the different sections of it. And I'm gonna compress these drums the same way as I'm explaining all the different sections. So the first section here is the middle part. So we have threshold makeup gain and then we have the gain reduction display with the little thingy that goes up and down. <laughs> Uh, you can see how much gain reduction is being applied to the signal after the threshold using this. So you can see 0, 5, uh, 10, 15, 20. So these are actually indicating 0, minus 5, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20. So now if I play, okay, you can see that nothing is happening. No gain reduction is happening happening because the zero, the thingy, the blue thingy is just stay, staying in zero. First thing I need to do to apply threshold is to see where is the dynamic range of the signal. So I'm just going to be looking at the main channel here. So the signal goes in between around minus three to minus 28, somewhere there. Between this is the highest and the lowest point of the signal, which is called the dynamic range. So do I want to just now create the cohesive situation where I compress kind of all the, the whole signal? Or do I just want to concentrate on the top parts of the loudest bits? Well, I want to kind of go for the cohesive sound because we are doing glue compression. So what did I say? 
like between minus 24 and 30. So let's go to minus 28. Is any gain reduction happening when I press play now? Wow. Wow. A lot. <laughs> So as you could hear, it gets quieter and that's the point of a compression. Com point of compression is to make things quieter, not to make it louder, but per to perceive it as louder. We do perceive. So go to the other video to see what I mean with all that. <laughs> we added some threshold. It's quite harsh. So I'm going to just go to minus 25 just because of the, yeah. That sounds a bit more like what I like. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Okay, so makeup gain is something that you need to do whole through the whole thing. So it is gain staging purpose. As you, I said, glue compression, compression makes things quieter. So we need to just match it up to what it was before. We just have the input on the left and we have input on the right. So what I can do is either just match them with an, uh, with using eye, my, my eyes. I made this Max for Live fader as well. I can just put it on my website. You can go and download it if you want. Um, and I just have it on the left side and right side. So what you can see is when gain reduction happens, the input will be more than the output. Much more. So if I want to, I can just use my eyes and just match it. Then just compare before compression, after. So it's about the same, like that. Okay, so ratio is how much compression is being applied to the signal that goes over the threshold. Uh, the threshold. So what we did is minus 25. So if it's in minus 25 around here, so everything above minus 25 here will be compressed. Because this is the analog situation, we only get a two to one uh, four to one and 10 to one. So very hard, very kind of easy going ratio, kind of mid ratio and quite hard ratio. So what that means that for every four decibels that goes over the threshold, we'll get back only one decibel. Again, more explanation in the video down below, but that's the basics of it. So every four decibel that go over the minus 25, decibels on <laughs> over the threshold, we get back only one and that's why it's reducing it. That's why we get quieter signal and that's why we are flattening the, the dynamic range of the signal. We either have very easy ratio, kind of nice, be harsher. And by the way, I can already hear the difference here. So that's really cool about the glue compressor that it works quite um, it's quite subtle, it's quite warm, but I definitely hear a difference already between two and four, which is great. And then let's go to 10. It's really pressing those uh, kicks. You can see the reduction that happens when the kicks hit. It goes to minus 15 all the way there. Nice. Attack and release. So in the glue compression, we actually have attack represented as milliseconds. And then we have release represented in seconds. Yes, we do. So example, if we have faster attack and slower release, faster attack, slower release, or slow attack, faster release. And that means that th this is compression, by the way. <laughs> so attack and release are how fast is the compression starting to work when it starts from the threshold to work over the, the signal that goes over the threshold and how fast does it return? <laughs> so example, we could have quite fast attack, maybe three. So you can see that the gain reduction goes like very fast and then it returns lower. So let's go very slow release. 
and you can see it in the meter there. How does it work? And then let's go other way around. Fast release, faster release and slower attack. So I'm going to go for a long, uh, faster attack and longer release because I really like that. It was really, really, really taking those dynamics in. But there's also another option in release, which is called A, which is auto release. And in glute compression, that's really cool. So it's the A is really useful for smooth out some of the really harsh transients in a really smooth and gentle way. So example, if you have vocals, if you have drums like this, and you really want to smooth it out, uh, the A could be your thing if you don't want to do it manually but it can't be too slow maybe for you so you need to kind of see do you want it to manually to set or do you want to use a Okay, so then we have the right side where we have clip, range and dry wet control. Dry wet control is a bit like parallel compression. So basically if it's 100%, it's complete only compressed signal. Zero is just dry signal. And 50% is half dry, half wet. So same as parallel compression. So it's just really we don't need to do all the routing if you don't want to. We have a soft clip. If I add that, it will add a little bit wave shaping distortion on the top of the signal. It will add also uh, more volumes. So it can be really good for especially this type of, you know, drum bus where we want maybe a bit more color into the whole situation. Also, it shows here when it's clipping. So when it actually gets to over the zero, when it gets there, it turns red. And it basically uh, prevents it to clipping, but we will turn into a distortion sound. Okay, so the range limits the extent of the compression. So the amount that we can gain, reduce that what we can do. So you can see that when I move it, there is this mark on the actual gain reduction display that shows us where do we want to limit to. So example, if I put 10, db so that's example where i want to reduce it to so we have a little bit longer release a little bit faster attack there we go and even as much as more threshold or ratio i add you see that it doesn't go over the 10 points so the point of this is to add more a natural sounding compression because we are limiting and how much the compression can actually work. Listen to the change. Okay, so we have range down and we have a lot of threshold and very high ratio. And when it gets to the kicks and stuff, it's really squashing them a lot. And now let's use the range to limit the how much can we gain reduction. So this is with compression and without compression. Such a big difference. One more thing, which is side chaining. So exactly the same that we had in normal compression, uh, the regular compression, we have a side chaining option and we have an EQ option to select the side chaining. Where does it affect on the frequency range? So I have a base here and I'm just gonna quickly show it with the glue compressors. Okay, and I have, I'm just gonna add quick compression to it. Okay, and now we're gonna add sidechain it with the drums that we have playing on the other channel. So I'm just gonna activate sidechain. I'm gonna go here, add the drum 
Items, which is the first one, which I should just post effects. Uh, uh, and then we have the gain option, also mix, how much mix are we uh, applying? And then we have EQ, just try them out in a minute. How cool is that already? And then we can use the EQ. So example, we have the kick on the low end coming in. So now it's affecting more because I have a, a low pass filter here and I go to the low end. It's actually affecting, the kick is affecting mostly into the compression and the bass sound that we have in here. And then if we have it other way around, we will have the snare and the hi-hats affecting it. Well, with the high shelf, especially. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, please hit the bell icon and also check out my merch. Bit like this this type of stuff there is t-shirts there is hoodies there is a lot of cool stuff so check that out from the link down below and also thank you do you see these names here these are my patreon followers so they are the people who are so lovely and amazing and i want to thank you everybody who's here so if you also want to be part of this club here then go to the link down below but otherwise i'll see you here next sunday because i post every sunday so i'll definitely be here but will you we will see <laughs> but have a lovely day have a lovely sunday and see you next sunday bye